Um, well, Sean has been a county councillor for, for over 18 years, he's held a number of lead roles including environment and transport, he's vice chair of the Economy and Transport Programme Board of the LGA, um, he's also a member of the National Cycling Strategy Board, the board of the Low Carbon Vehicle Partnership, uh, and indeed the Commission for Integrated Transport. And is exceptionally well qualified, I'm sure, to give us uh, what hopefully is a good round off to the day's proceedings. Thank you very much, and I'm very conscious that I am the one person that stands between you and drinks and dinner, so I will try to give you a brief commentary just on the political perspective um, to delivering the guided busway. Um, and I just want to start by just showing headline from today's Times, which was about jobs and growth stifled by failed planning laws, um, and the claim that they need, we need to deliver faster planning decisions at lower cost. Um, and if there's one thing I would add to Bob's lessons learned, list of lessons learned, it would be frustration. Um, and just be prepared for uh, frustration. From conception to completion, this scheme has taken around about 12 years, and both Graham and Andy have talked about uh, the length of time that we have been talking about the delivery of the guided busway scheme and Norstow. Um, so, I want to go back to 1998, which is when I first became involved in this project. And locally, there was a campaign called Cambridge is Full. Uh, here we were, a Conservative administration with a Labour government. A Labour government that wanted us to deliver on housing and employment growth in the area against this background of Cambridge is Full. So we had a choice. We could choose to fight the government respond to local political pressure, or we could choose to work with them. And it was pretty much David and Goliath, and in this case, Goliath would certainly have won. And did I want John Prescott deciding what was going to happen to the growth around Cambridgeshire? No, I did not. So, okay, we'll work with you, government, but we'll do it on our terms. And to paraphrase Tony Blair's mantra, it'll be about infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. And that's going to require working with government. And there were some real opportunities at the time. Um, I don't know whether any of you around that remembered the white paper, uh, workhorse to thoroughbred about buses and improving bus services. And of course, there were the multimodal studies, and Graham's referred to the Chums study. But actually, when Chums first started, was first proposed, it was at the bottom of phase two of a long list of multimodal studies. And yet the A14 and the need to do something about the A14 was at the heart of our infrastructure deficit, which we'd costed then at a million, uh, sorry, a billion pounds for what we needed to do to deliver the uh, growth agenda for Cambridgeshire. So we lobbied successfully with what was then DETR um, to bring that multimodal study from somewhere down the bottom of phase two, and if it had stayed there, it would never have happened, to be the first, and I still actually believe the most successful of the multimodal studies. And I think that was proof of their decision that working with, not against government, was the right one. So, as you've seen, and I'm awfully glad we've all put our presentations together differently, and this is yet another iteration of that map that Graham has showed, and Bob has showed, and Andy has showed. Um, but at the same time as that multimodal study, we were developing the structure plan, which was identifying Norstow as a suitable site for amazing, major housing. And it was clear from earlier experiences at Bar Hill, and particularly Camborne, that infrastructure had to be in place before the housing was delivered. It was the only way we were going to get people out of their cars. Norstow, of course, was particularly suitable because it was on the site of the old railway, which hadn't been used since the 1980s, apart from a couple of um, sort of specials that were run uh, by rail enthusiasts. And I actually went on both of those trains. The first one was packed to capacity, and the second one was virtually empty because nobody wanted to use it because they'd seen what it was like. Perhaps if they provided modern trains, then it might have been better. But it did provide an opportunity for some high-quality public transport between Cambridge and Huntingdon. And I was very clear that this was not about Cambridge, this was about Cambridge and Huntingdon, the whole corridor. I did actually think about entitling my presentation, Trust Me, I'm a Politician. Ian talked about a leap of faith, and to a certain extent, even with all the evidence provided by the Chum study, um, as Ian's mentioned, 
Nobody really knew what it was like. And Bob, I am still waiting for my trip to Adelaide, let alone Essen. I never got it. But it did require commitment and a will for it to succeed. And actually, at this particular point, I would just like to pay real credit to the officers in Cambridgeshire County Council who did trust me. Uh, just as I trusted them with the evidence they presented to me, they trusted me um, with the political will to actually take it forward. And I would say that from the political perspective, what it needs is clarity of vision. Of course, one woman's vision is another man's nightmare, as cast iron and others demonstrated. The opposition began to emerge, um, and it took three forms. And I was quite glad it did take three forms. There was cast iron, there was save the lakes, how could we possibly want to destroy these beautiful lakes going through Fendrayton? And there was Histon and Impington. Um, and of course there was, um, there was Ian's boot out the bus campaign. Of course what was, um, I think, really helpful to us is that actually those three campaigns, um, only one of them actually wanted to do something, which is cast iron. Save the Lakes and Histon and Impington were both about leaving the existing mess as it was. And it was a mess. It's quite nice to go for a walk along it, but you couldn't actually walk along it very easily because it was covered in brambles and you used to get your legs cut to shreds by them. And I know because I did. So only cast iron provided the real um, opposition with their alternative proposals. I think had they been united, our might, job actually might have been much more difficult. There was, of course, also political opposition, but we worked very closely uh, with others to try to seek compromise. Bob's mentioned the RSPB, um, who actually supported what we were doing uh, through public inquiry. Uh, Ian, there were four people who supported us, not three. I think I've got one more to write the letters. Um, but we also needed to work very closely um, with um, uh, uh, our political colleagues in the districts. Um, with Ian up in Huntingdonshire. Ian was leader of Huntingdonshire at the time. And also with um, our colleagues in the city council. And of course, they were Liberal Democrats and not Conservatives, so they're not going to support what we do, are they? Because actually, in the city, they really want to be responsible for their own transport because there are no Conservative councillors in the city and we don't know what we're talking about. I always used to make the claim that as a South Cams councillor, and interestingly, I represent the North Stowe Division, I was one of the city's problems and I was trying to sort it for them. But inevitably with the city, that what they said publicly was not what they said to us privately. And so it required a recognition, I think, on our part, not to make political capital, which we could have done, out of um, their internal difficulties about supporting public transport, because Liberal Democrats support public transport and investment. So being seen to oppose a significant public transport scene did, did give them difficulties. And we could have made some real political capital out of those mixed messages. But actually to deliver the scheme, it was really important that we didn't, that we did it very quietly, step by step. So, what next? The future. I don't think the future's going to look like that. Um, my vision of where we were, and it, it was my vision, it's not quite as we've got, um, and I'm still talking to Andy, because what I would like to see is more feeder services from the villages around the busway, linking into the busway, um, collecting people and dropping them off either at the park and rides or indeed other bus stops. Um, and um, I'd like to see some services um, to the south of the city on a Sunday, please, um, Andy. Um, and I think uh, for me, one of the most important things is continuing the integration of public transport in Cambridgeshire, and crucial to that will be delivery of Chesterton Station. Um, I, I happened to read uh, the Cambridge News last week. Um, I've been away for a week and I've been catching up, and this morning I read the Cambridge News and, and an editorial which said there's been no political will. Um, and I thought, that's absolute rubbish. Well, I thought more than that, but... Um, I'm in polite conversation. Uh, absolute rubbish. There has been political will all the way along to deliver Chesterton. It is absolutely crucial. And to link the guided busway into Chesterton to provide another park and ride site at Chesterton will hugely improve public transport um, within Cambridge and particularly to the north of Cambridge. So it does require vision. And my final comment is that actually I don't think we have any problem with vision in Cambridgeshire. Um, and thank you very much. <laughs>